Hi everyone, this is Carolise and thank you for checking out the channel. This is the place for you to learn business analysis tips. If you are a business analyst, if you're a product owner, if you're a project manager, product manager, if you're working in projects, any at all that have to do with requirements and user stories, if you're in Agile, if you're in Waterfall, this is the place for you because this is where we share information about business analysis that can help you grow in your career. a little bit about my origin story so i am jamaican as you can tell from my accent right so that's where that comes from i was born in the beautiful little island of jamaica it really is a paradise island but i grew up near to the, the city so we were still country enough to be considered country but we could jump on a bus and be in city but in like half an hour so we were close enough to the happenings in the city of kingston jamaica so growing up in that setting i we grew up poor, we didn't have anything, my mom had two of us, and we struggled a lot when I was growing up, but I would escape into reading. I really liked reading, and I felt like reading was the way I could travel, I could see the world, I could know different things, and I was obsessed with just getting information, just learning things and soaking up information, so I read a lot of books. And I remember when I was young, they closed down the library and I was like in tears, like, what am I going to do? I can't afford to buy the books. I would go to the library and read them. But luckily they had a mobile library that would come every Tuesday. And I remember coming from school and waiting outside, just waiting to see the library roll up. And this was just like a little minivan, like a really small little van. And two people couldn't be in there at the same time. You had to go in and pick your book and come back out, somebody else go in. It was so small, but I would make that effort because I really loved reading and I wanted to just explore the world through the books. And that helped me a lot because when I got to high school, I kind of brought that same attitude with me. So I was always reading. I would have these big heavy backpacks with all the books because we didn't have lockers in Jamaica to like leave your books at school and go home and come back. Uh -uh. Every day I had to make the trek and I'll be walking like two miles to the bus stop and it so happened that I was going in the opposite direction from everybody else. So in Jamaica, there's a stigma of the type of school that you go to. You want to go to a good school, a school that's reputable with lots of big names that have gone there. And so by some sequence of events, I ended up going to a school that was not so reputable, that was in the country area. Everybody was going into town. I was going into the country. And I felt bad. I felt like, oh, my God, my life is going to be bad because nobody that's ever left this school has been like successful. Like people leave there and they just, they're not successful. So I went there with that, you know, feeling like, oh, I'm going to be a failure in life <laughs> because of the school I went to. But it so turned out that there was this pocket of people that went in my year and they were all like exceptionally good. Like there were people that were just they would pass every exam. They were nationally recognized. They had lots of credits from the amount of work that they did. Their projects were so good. And I was lucky enough to be a part of that batch. And so in 1996 was the first time that school was doing computer science, right? And this was a novel thing back then. Other schools were doing it, but because this is a country school, we, you know, we're in the bushes, <laughs> you know, we were behind and everything. And for that first batch, they picked a set of students that they wanted to do uh, computer science because they felt that those students would have a better chance of being successful. And guess who they picked? They picked me to be among the batch. And that was the first time the school was doing computer science and we were like pioneers, you know, and we started programming and building different things with the code. And it exposed me to a world of, wow, you know, even though you thought that this school was going to be the worst thing ever and it turns out that you're among very smart kids that like the kids that were in my class were really exceptionally good and not only that but here you are getting this opportunity to learn something that's new and novel that you know the world is going towards and I was just overwhelmed at the opportunity that I got and I felt like God really was driving me somewhere and I was really grateful and so I got a change of mindset that I could do anything. I could do anything anywhere. It doesn't matter the place they put me, I could, I could overcome and do anything. So I went through that. I finished high school, um, got good grades and everything. But now it's time for college. And my mom's like, I can't afford to send you to college. Like I, 
my mom doesn't have it and I, I don't have it. So the logical thing there was to take a loan and just go to school on the loan. But I thought, hey, maybe I could find another way. Like again, always trying to solve a problem, always thinking about the unconventional way to solve a very common problems, right? And so I kept looking and I kept looking and there was this stretch of road in, in Jamaica that we have a lot of embassies at, right? And I remember walking that stretch and asking every single embassy if they had a scholarship, if they could help me. I want to go to college, but I can't afford it. Can you help me? And I went to Germany. I went to Portugal. I went to Spain. All of these embassies that was in the, on that stretch. And everybody was like, some people had, but they had so many conditions that I didn't meet. And then other people like, no, we can't, we don't have, but we can't help you. And then I eventually found one that did, and I was able to get a scholarship and travel overseas to do my, my first degree. When I did that, it was a great experience. I came back to Jamaica. Now I have a degree in informatics engineering. And I said to myself, well, I guess I'm going to become a programmer. So <laughs> I went down the road trying to find a job as a programmer. But the thing is, when I was in college, we were learning something called C++. And we did some web, web programming, PHP, and so on. When I came out of college, the world had moved on to Java. And now I got to go learn Java. And there's some other tools I got to learn. So I felt like I was chasing all the new technology. And I didn't want to spend my life doing that. Plus, I didn't like spending my life behind a computer. I wanted to be interfacing with people, learning with people, you know, dealing with people, but not on the front end. Like, it was very weird. I didn't want to be like a customer service person. But I didn't want to be stuck behind my computer either. So I was like, what do I do? So I eventually, I landed a job as a technical support. I did technical support for a while. I liked it. It was fun. But then I saw this job for business analyst. And I was like, hmm, what's that? I don't know. But it looks like I can do it. So I applied. And of course, I got the job. Well, not of course. I was lucky enough to get the job. Grace is to God. Thanks be to God. And, you know, God helped me to maneuver my way into the career. And I started working there in this job as a business analyst and I was like perked up I was like I actually like this thing I like the fact that I'm so close to technology because I really like IT that's what I studied I really liked it but yet I'm not coding I'm not stuck behind my computer I can actually talk to people I can learn I can build I have influence over what direction our product goes I mean like this is great I was, I was like, thank you, Jesus. I found it. I found the thing. All my learning, all these years, all the things I was doing, even before I knew it was called business analysis, is culminating into this field, and I love it. And I felt like I have found the thing I can do that is very, very me. That 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 makes me shine. That I enjoy. That I'm good at. That I can, I can be successful at. And so I was like, thank you, Jesus. I found it. And then a few years later, I wanted to get my master's degree because I just wanted to have that. And I got another scholarship to do my master's degree. And this time I did it in project management and engineering because I like the product side and I like the engineering side. So I just combined the two. Luckily, they had that program. And then I went back and I started working again as business analyst. I just love the field. And so I've had many years of experience working in different verticals, in different industries. I've worked with big companies. I've worked with small companies. And I have this wealth of information that I want to share. But unfortunately, the people in my circle, they, they don't know what I do. Like every time I explain it, people still don't understand what I do. I don't know if I'm not good at explaining my, my job or what, but it just goes over their heads and they don't really care about it. So I all this wealth of information. I'm like, how can I actually use this to help others? Like, what can I do? And so in 2018, I had the bright idea to just make a video. And I made my first video, which is the one that you probably watch, which is called How to Break into Business Analysis. I made that. Uh, I don't think that was my first. I take it back. I think I made one before that, but that was the one that I kind of sat down and talked for the longer time than the other ones that were much shorter. And I did that and then I didn't, I did a few more and I didn't do much. I was, I wasn't really taking it seriously. I was just playing with it. But come 2019, I was like, okay. I'm going to actually focus on my YouTube channel. I'm going to make videos. I'm going to give the value that I think people would want to hear. I'm going to, I'm going to share the knowledge that I have and see what happens. You know, I thought at first that nobody would care about this content. I thought that there's already so many people doing this kind of stuff. Why would they listen to me? Um, I thought, you know, so many well-renowned people who have written books and have more you know, authority in the space is there. Like, why would anybody watch my channel? 
But then to my surprise, people actually liked how I delivered the information because I promised to give you yawn free content, yawn free content. I don't want anybody to come here to sleep. This is not a place for sleeping. This is a place to be active, to learn, to, to be awake, right? Because I, I personally don't like to be a part of like webinars or conferences and it's just like snooze fest, you know, like I want to keep people engaged. And so I promised to give you yarn free content. And that was a part of my, 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 my goal to be energetic, to present the valuable information in a way that people can understand, can consume and can make it relevant. I don't want you to leave here with just this fluffy information. It's like all fluffy, but you can't apply anything. I want to give you concrete, detailed examples that you can actually apply in your life. I want you to go out there and, you know, apply for a job and have all the tips for your interview that you can actually get the job. I want to show you how to do things for your requirements, for user stories that you can actually go out there and implement and do. And that was a part of it to make it real. So I call it real world business analysis and IT because I want it to be very, very close to your actual experience. I don't want it to be a bunch of fluff. So that I stuck to that um, core value. And I thought, it, I think it worked out well. <laughs> what do you think? I think it was good. And so in 2020, I have some more initiatives that I'm doing and the year, years to come. And I, I really appreciate you being here. I'm happy that you're here. I'm glad that you enjoy the videos that I've been putting out. And please reach out to me on my blog, carolise.com. Also check out my Facebook group called Real World Business Analysis and IT. Um, I'm on Instagram, just Carolise. I'm also, I have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash Carolise. Reach out to me because I do respond. I do read the emails that I get. I do respond to comments. So I'm touchable. You can actually get to me. You know, I'm not this standoff person that you can't get to. You can send me an email. I may not answer it right away, but I will definitely answer you. So thank you again for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, like, comment. That's the way you give me back feedback, right? So I appreciate it and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.